commitment, it, then it will influence you. So it will reduce getting into bad actions. It will reduce your. Uh, it will reduce. Uh, it will reduce. Uh, <clears throat> yes, getting into bad actions, right? So you have made the commitment uh, again, and I will never do that again. I will never do bad actions because it will bring me suffering, and trouble, and uh, nothing good. So I will never do that kind of. Con There's a commitment, power of commitment. And then, uh, antidote, power of antidote, you know, power of antidote. So the power of antidote, any, uh, normally any kinds of, any, any kinds of uh, Dharma practice, that is power of antidote, uh, antidote. You recite man mantras, you recite uh, uh, prayers, you recite, uh, you recite, uh, uh, pujas, or uh, you meditate on bodhicit, you med you contemplate on Buddha Dharma, uh, and you think. Uh, uh, so, among the mantras, it is considered the hundred sevens mantra or Bodhisattva's mantra. It's considered most powerful. Uh, to purify, for purification, this mantra is regarded as the most powerful mantra. So all the mantras are uh, uh, very powerful, but uh, then you know the Bodhisattva mantra, uh, not Bodhisattva, Vajrasattva. Vajrasattva mantra is considered regarded uh, as regard as a, a most powerful mantra. So for example. Uh, it has mentioned in the Tantra, or, uh, so even even you have broken the one of the uh, root downfalls of highest yoga tantra. You understand? That is very very dangerous. It's very dangerous if you break one of the root uh, down uh, root downfalls of highest yoga tantra. And you directly go to the, the worst hell realm. That is called Bajra hell. You know? So that is a. Uh, um, so if you, have, uh, uh, if you have done that, then how to. Restore that vow, and how to avoid going, how to escape to go to, from the, from, how to escape from going to Vajra hell. So there are several methods, and one method is, uh, uh, one method is, you recite hundred syllables mantra, hundred thousand times. So if you recite. 100,000 times that 100 syllabus mantra, then that bad action will be purified and you will not have to go to Vajra hell. So, like that. So, that is considered very heavy, very heavy bad karma. Even it is, uh, it, it might be difficult to understand, but it is true that. It, it would be even more heavier, heavier come bad karma than the than the uh, than the bad karma accumulated by Hitler. You, can you imagine the bad karma created uh, accumulated by Hitler? You cannot imagine. I mean, it's unbelievable. Uh, millions of people were killed in that terrible manner. Everyone knows the history. But if you compare with the root downfalling, breaking root, uh, one of the root, not all 18 root downfallings, only one root down, breaking root downfall, that becomes, you cannot imagine, you know, it's a, it's a, 
incredible. You cannot think of that. So that can be purified. Hundred syllabus mantra, hundred, one hundred thousand times. So if you think about the result, then it is nothing. Hundred. It might take one month, but uh, for Singaporeans, it might take three months. <laughs> if you are not uh, familiar, I mean, some people they might be familiar. You can do it faster. But if normally, uh, for the Tibetans, one month. Quite, quite easily it can be done. So you spend one month, it's not much, you know. So, but st still, when we talk about the beginless time, so we have so many. Uh, it's uh, our accumulation of bad karma is huge. You, again, it is uh, like a, uh, you can, uh, it, even if you put in the universe, you do, the universe can be filled, you know. So it takes time to. Purify. It, takes, it takes time to purify all of them. You know, to purify all of them. It can get lighter and lighter, and you can weaken them, weaken, weaken them. So finally, you can get rid of all of them. You know. And then uh, the most powerful antidote power is meditating on emptiness. Oh, meditating on emptiness. So at the end, whenever you are practicing this uh, compassion. At the end, you should meditate meditate on emptiness, and uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, uh, you should meditate on emptiness according to your understanding, because we have different level of understanding of the meaning of emptiness. So uh, uh, maybe all of us, or maybe many of us, we are not perfect. Uh, we don't have the perfect understanding. But still, we do have some kind of understanding that can be developed. So, with that understanding, you meditate on emptiness, and you think that uh, you think you you th you contemplate on the emptiness of yourself, emptiness of the karma, and the empty emptiness of the result of karma, and the emptiness of all phenomena. So that is very powerful for purification. So, there's four forces or four powers. So with these four powers, any kinds of uh, bad karma can be purified. There's a guarantee for that. Uh, and then, uh, now I better go. Uh, uh, what I told you, there's a guarantee for that, that you can be uh, your bad karma can be purified. So if you are emphasizing on uh, the practice of purification, uh, then you do more practice on purification and then other six practices you can do slightly uh, in brief, you know, you can do briefly uh, other practices. Or, for example, if you, uh, at that beginning you are emphasizing on the practice of offering, then you do the offering uh, practice in a very, very elaborate way. And the other practices you can do it in brief. And then after some time, you know, uh, like uh, one week you do, uh, you make emphasize on the offering, uh, because if you if you emphasize on all the seven practices every day, then we don't have enough time, you know. So, uh, we don't have enough time. So, uh, most of us don't have enough time. So, what we can do, you emphasize one practice for one week, and then second practice for another week, like that. But we shouldn't miss all others, but you, we just touch, touch, touch other practices, and emphasize on one practice. So confession also. Maybe we, we uh, concentrate on the practice of confession and then you keep on going and going. Then you can, uh, you can there are several uh, signs of uh, yourself being uh, purified, you know. Uh, now I don't remember, that is Buddha's, uh, in Buddha's Sutra. Uh, I have to quote. But um, uh, you can maybe you can find from some other books. 
you know, you feel lighter and in the dream you're flying and uh, drinking white yogurt, white milk and uh, all of that kind of, uh, some several uh, different kinds of dreams mentioned by Buddha himself. So you, we can get that kind of science. So that means you are being purified. And then mm, we must make a request to uh, Guru Tsongkhapa to teach, to teach us. Uh, because without uh, making a request, uh, the, the Buddhas normally, uh, they don't teach, they don't give teachings, you know, that is the tradition. Because Buddha himself, when Buddha uh, was enlightened in Bodh Gaya, how many weeks he kept silent, he didn't teach any word uh, uh, to anybody. And then uh, he was requested to turn his, uh, the wheel of Dharma. And then he accepted by the Brahma and the Indras or the heaven, the gods of heaven, you know. So they, they requested him to turn the wheel of Dharma. And then he turned the wheel of Dharma first time in Saranath Varanasi. Right, we all know about that. So similarly, we have to make a request. Venerable holy gurus, in the space of your truth body, from I don't know the belowy from the belowy clouds of your wisdom and love. Let fall the rain of the profound and extensive Dharma uh, in whatever form is suitable for subduing sentient beings. <clears throat> Venerable holy gurus. In the space of your truth body, that is Dhammakaya. Truth body means Dhammakaya. Uh, in the space of your truth, that here, this here we take Dhammakaya as uh, space, you know, sky, uh, and our our continuum is taken as our mind, our continuum, is taken as the earth, okay? Ground, the earth. Uh, and then we make request uh, to the Venerable Holy Guru, Gurus, uh, uh, for raining, for the rain of extensive Dhamma teachings. Uh, so Dhamma teaching is taken as a, the rain. Dhamma, Dhamma teaching is taken as a rain, taken as the rain. And uh, uh, And then the mind, uh, the omniscient mind and the, the great compassion, omniscient mind and the great compassion, okay, I missed one, one verse before this verse. So I have gone through this verse, so I will complete this, and then I will go back to the previous verse, you know, uh, sentences. So, <clears throat> the, you are to say, the omniscient, uh, omniscient mind of Gurus and the great compassion within them are taken as uh, the cloud. So, 
in the space, in the sky, and the cloud come in the sky, and then from the cloud, the rain come onto the earth. So, so that means, please uh, make the rainfall. Uh, that means, please give the extensive Dharma teaching uh, to the earth, to the earth. That is to our uh, to our continuum. Uh, through the omniscient mind and great compassion, of which comes, uh, which uh, arises from arose uh, from uh, from Dharmakaya, space of truth, truth body. So please uh, let the rain fall into our mind. So that is the request that we are making to turn the Dharma wheel. Okay, to turn the Dharma wheel. So the the previous uh, verse is that is rejoicing, right? The practice of rejoice. In this degenerate time, you worked for broad learning and accomplishment, abandoning the eight worldly concerns to realize. The great value of uh, leisure and opportunity. Uh, sincerely, O oh protectors, I rejoice in your great deeds. So, uh, the, uh, you must know about the history of Guru Tsongkhapa, the biography of Guru Tsongkhapa. You must read the uh, bi biography of Guru Tsongkhapa so that you know his activities, what he did in the uh, uh, in, uh, while he was alive in Tibet, you know, in maybe 14th century. So, uh, in short, what he did is he studied at the beginning and uh, uh, he studied uh, the broad, it says a broad learning, you know, he studied uh, extensively and, uh, uh, and then he meditated and then he, he taught to others. And that was one of his great activities. And then he he was not uh, interested in the worldly eight worldly concerns, you know, eight worldly features, you know, eight worldly qualities. So eight worldly qualities. It is very difficult to get rid of of all eight uh, eight worldly concerns. So uh, he was never attached to eight, those all those eight worldly concerns. Do you know the eight, eight worldly concerns? You don't know. Oh, it is not difficult. It is very easy to to, to, to count and to, but it may be difficult to practice. Yeah. So uh, normally this is uh, four positives and four negatives. You know, so it becomes eight. So uh, we, uh, when we find whatever we want, when we feel happy, that is one. The opposite to that is when uh, when we don't find what we want, what what we wish for, then we are unhappy. So that is uh, two uh, two concerns, and. When we are happy, then uh, when we are when we are comfortable, uh, then we feel happy. When we are uncomfortable, then we are unhappy. So we are attached to the comforts of this world, you know. So that is to fall. Uh, then we heard. Uh, Nice sounds like nice good music, which you like, you hear, and then you enjoy, you feel happy. But bad noises, which the noises or music or whatever you don't like, then you feel very unhappy. And then you, when you hear praising to you, you of course. Uh, feel very happy if someone praise you 
or you are beautiful, you are a good man, or you are rich people, or whatever you know. So you enjoy that words, you enjoy that words. And then somebody trying to defend you, uh, you are bad, you are bad person, you are a bad person, uh, you know nothing, you are stupid, you are an idiot, something like that. Then you feel very un uh, upset and unhappy. So there, these are the four, uh, uh, eight uh, worldly concerns. So yesterday we talked about uh, the mind training. Through mind training, then uh, these these all eight concerns will not affect you. So only through mind training you can train our mind, your mind not not to affect these concerns. Because if uh, something unpleasant comes to you, you can take it. There's no problem. As if uh, there's uh, many ways to take it. You know, uh, if you are sick, you can take it positively. If you if you are hurt, being hurt by others, you can take it positively. So you remember uh, the converting unfavorable conditions uh, to uh, the path to enlightenment. You remember that. You know. So that is very. Uh, uh, very uh, important and very um, very helpful. If you can train in that way, then nothing can affect you. you know? If somebody is angry with you, the, the, he will be the person. Uh, he will be the only person uh, which uh, the anger is affecting. You are not affected. You know. So. That is uh, worldly concerns. So uh, Guru Tsongkhapa, when he was there, you know, he never cared about good fame, and he never cared about uh, the bad conditions he went through. So I said, you know, you better go through the biography. Then you can, you will understand what does it mean by uh, abandoning the eight worldly concerns. And uh, so we rejoice uh, the great um, activities undertaken by Guru Tsongkhapa while he was alive in Tibet, right? So that is uh, the verses, the words that I missed. And that now the, to the next, uh, we are making a request to live long, to live uh, in front of us that we have visualized. So uh, forever. So number one, say English, I'm going to do something. Can you imagine? How many languages do you speak? Do you speak Tibetan? 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 to the ordinary viewer only in its unsubtle physical form, stay on, unchanging, without one, without wedding, until samsara ends. So you understand, uh, I believe you understand the words, you know, may the Vajra body uh, created from the purity of clear light. So the, the, the clear light, this is term, a term which is used in Tantrayana, Bajrayana, right? The clear light, particularly in Hayasa Yoga Tantra. It's a very important, it's a very important subject in Hayasa Yoga Tantra because it is like uh, The clear light is, the, is like a creator. Of course, as a Buddhist, we don't uh, we don't believe in creator as a god or whatever. But everything comes out from came out from clear light, you know. Finally, it dissolves into clear, clear light. So it's like creator, you know. 
So from clear light, the 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 body appearance of the body of Guru Tsongkhapa, you know, and the the real kayas, real bodies of Buddhas, Guru Tsongkhapa, there is no uh, rising and there is no set setting down. There is nothing like that. Sun rises, sun sets down, right? So the, the, from the clear light, the Guru's uh, body comes out, arises and setting down. There's nothing like that. It is always the same. But, uh, but, but uh, uh, for the ordinary, uh, for the uh, ordinary, uh, ep uh, for the ordinary view, uh, for the ordinary view of us, we need a uh, gross level uh, body, physical body. So that is the, your appearance. So this appearance should be there uh, until samsara ends. So you shouldn't, uh, even though, in, in, in short, even though you are beyond uh, uh, beyond taking rebirth and dying and rebirth and so forth, uh, you are beyond that. But but that this gross level appearance to the uh, to the disciples like us, it should be there uh, till the samsara ends. So we request to you to remain in the same form for us for uh, for long period, right? So now the dedication. Dagisine sabe gewa di ite na gawa ko na kambeya na chamo jizo no sota ba ite me nyumu jino se shows. Whatever virtue I may have gathered here may it bring benefit to the migrating beings and to the uh, Buddha's teaching. May may it take, may it make the essence of Buddha's doctrine and especially the teachings of Venerable Lhasa Thakpa shine for a long, a, uh, a long time. So I dedicate, uh, so this is the dedication over here, and you can make other dedications, you know, like, uh, like, uh, uh, like uh, my practice should be very successful, my practice of Dhamma should be very successful, benefiting all sentient beings. Oh, so you can add on any uh, more dedications. But here in the book, the dedication is to this, um, uh, accum uh, whatever I might have accumulated merit at this point, I dedicate them uh, uh, to benefit the teachings of Dharma or Buddha and uh, for, the benefit, for the sake of all sentient beings, particularly to remain the teaching of uh, Guru Tsongkhapa for a long, long time, and to remain Guru Tsongkhapa's teaching in this world for a long, long time. And then, so it is uh, very, uh, very uh, important that we should feel uh, how fortunate we are uh, by coming across with uh, the teaching of Guru Tsongkhapa. So it is not that easy. We need a lot of merit. You know, we see in the world, we see Buddhists a very minority. But sometimes we wonder, but there is nothing to wonder. Because we, you can understand, most of the people, they are not fortunate. They don't have enough merit to uh, to come across with Buddhism, you know. So <clears throat> there's, uh, it's, it is not a surprise. And then, then how many of uh, the, among the Buddhists, how many of them are Mahayana, even smaller? Among the, the Mahayana, how many of <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> How many of uh, 
de bacai na followers. Sibola. So it's like that. So that's, that is not a surprise because to meet with Bajrayana, uh, to, to meet with Bajrayana teaching, you need huge amount of recognition, you need huge amount of merit. And the lesser, bad, heavy, bad karma. And then you have to have good uh, connection with uh, true uh, prayers. You know what is prayer? Prayer is wishes that you might have wished to wished in the past. You might you should have wished to meet with Bajrayana practice. Only then you can meet. So that's prayer. So one of the Panjan Lamas, you know, I don't remember which Panjan Lama, earlier, long, long ago, maybe 300 years ago, 400 years ago, one of the Panjan Lamas, this person Panjan Lama is the 11th Panjan Lama. So one of the Panjan Lamas, he had his disciples from Mongolia, you know, he had his disciples from Mongolia. I heard this story from uh, one of the teachings from, of, of Ling Zumbuchi, the senior tutor to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So one of the Panjim Lama had a disciple from Mongolia and the Mongolian uh, disciple was a very good disciple, practiced Dharma seriously. And then one day he discussed with uh, his Guru Panjim Lama and then he requested, uh, maybe he was quite old, and he requested uh, the Guru Panjim Lama, please um, help me not to reburn in lower realms in my next life. And then Panjim Lama said, okay, I, I can, uh, he accepted his request, I will do that. And then he had another request, and I should uh, uh, meet with uh, uh, Buddha Dhamma, not taking rebirth, not only taking rebirth in human being, human form, I should, uh, I should get the precious human form and meet with the Buddha Dharma. Then also, uh, uh, Pajalama said, okay, that, uh, he accepted the request. I, Pajalama said, I will do that. And then finally, he requested uh, that uh, that too should be, meeting with Buddha Dharma too, should be uh, meeting with the teaching of Guru Tsongkhapa. And then Pajan Lama couldn't give the guarantee, you know, he couldn't give the guarantee. So he said that, that I cannot guarantee you, you should accumulate more merit and I, I will pray for you. But it, there was no assurance from Pajan Lama. So it is not that easy to meet with the Guru Tsongkhapa's teaching, you know. Uh, so, the, the maybe followers of Guru Tsongkhapa is uh, smaller in numbers, but it doesn't mean that uh, Guru Tsongkhapa's teaching is not so valuable. It means it is more valuable, <laughs> right? So that is, um, I thought uh, it is nice, better, uh, it's nice to share this story with you. And then the mantra. Great treasure of objectless compassion, Majushi, master of uh, flawless wisdom, uh, Vajrapani, destroyer of all the demonic forces, Tsongkhapa, crown jewel of snowland sages, Losantapa, I make request at your holy feet. So this is the uh, this is considered very uh, very uh, very powerful to my mantra. It is a, a praise to Tsongkhapa. Actually, uh, you know the Tsongkhapa, Kanjei Kebe Tsongkhapa, the ornament of uh, the, uh, the the Tsongkhapa, the ornament of all the uh, crown ornament of all the scholars of Tibet. Who is in the nature of Avalokiteshwara, in the nature of Manjushri, in the nature of Bajarpani. So there are three great qualities of Buddhas, you know, great compassion. So without great compassion, 
there will be no activities of Buddhas in the samsara. So there are so much activities of Buddhas going on in the samsara all the time. There is no break at all. It is continuous. It has been continuous. So that, that, that all comes from the great compassion. And even if great compassion is there, if you do not know how to help, then there is no, not, not much use. It can, it can be useless. The help can be useless. The activities can be useless. But activities were always useful. It's been never, it can it never be a useless activity, useless effort by Buddhas. Even for a second, it, uh, it cannot be a useless. So why? Because they know exactly how to do it, exactly when to do it, how to do it, and uh, and uh, and so forth. You know. So that is uh, uh, that comes from the wisdom. That comes from the wisdom. So that is Majushiri. And then all the obstacles can be taken care of. That is power, you know, that can be destroyed. Uh, the, 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 the force of the evils, devils, uh, that can be destroyed. That can be destroyed with the power of Bajapani. So Bajapani is the uh, Bajapani is the form of all the power, force of Buddhas. So they are all in one, that is Guru Tsongkhapa, who is the crown ornament of all the uh, scholars of Tibet, whose name is Losantapa. So I, uh, I make request uh, to Losantapa by uh, touching his feet, holy feet, that is the mantra. So actually, uh, his main, one of his main gurus uh, was uh, the Sakyapa Shunu Rendawa. Shunu Rendawa. Uh, Rendawa. Shunu Lote Jetze. So actually this phrase was written by Tsongkhapa himself and it was offered to his Guru Zedawa. And uh, instead of uh, this Kanji Kebe Tsongkhapa, the crown ornament of, uh, the, crown ornament of uh, the old scholars in Tibet, Tsongkhapa. Tsongkhapa, the crown ornament of all the uh, scholars of Tibet. Instead of that, he, uh, he originally uh, it was written as uh, the Zedawa, the crown ornament of all the scholars in Tibet. But uh, it was like that. And then instead of Losang Tarpe Shanosawa then, uh, and Shulu Lote Shanosawa, his Guru's name was there. And then Guru, so Guru listened to this praise and then Guru said to him, well, oh, this is very nice pray, uh, prayer you have composed, but it doesn't suit with me. It is more suitable with you. So I give it back to you. His, his Guru said. And he changed the last two words. Instead of Rendawa, he put the Tsongkhapa. Instead of Shunuru, he put the Losangtapa, name of Guru Tsongkhapa, and give it, to, give it back to Tsongkhapa. So it is blessed by two great Gurus of that time. So it is very uh, powerful and very blessing. blessing. Oh, so full of blessings. So it can, uh, if you recite this mantra, it can be you, your 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 wisdom can be increased. You can be protected from all kinds of forces, external and internal uh, negative forces. You can be protected from all that kind of uh, negative forces, and you can. Uh, you can uh, you 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 can do many other uh, you you can enhance many other dharma practices within yourself by reciting this mantra. Um, then the, uh, the 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 name mantra of Tsongkhapa is Oma Guru Bhaja Dara Sumadhi Kri Di Siddhi Hum Hum. That's it. Uh -huh. So 
before reciting me me the 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 words the five sentences that i have just explained before that uh, after the dedication uh, generally and traditionally we make the offering of mandala so you can make offering of mandala if you have time you can do the uh, uh, offering of mandala the detailed offering of mandala otherwise a short one with the four sentences sashibhuji sushi metodam you know that right sashibhu you can do that offering and then then you should uh, the yoga which is there shall long stand uh the position be then uh, we uh, then you uh, after offering mandala it is guru jana mandala ka niyata hai bhi and then you recite me me se vete ji se se and then you must be visualize you must meditate so in front you have you have just practiced the seven limbs of, limbs of practice and now you are reciting the mantra of me mantra of me me se ve and at that time you 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 visualize that nectar coming from the heart of sankhapa right letter coming from harutho and to his two sons you can put them together coming out separately and here put together and then comes to your crown like a straw straw you know in the shape of straw the water nectar should be liquid when you visualize the nectar it's, it's always liquid but it is light it is lighting it's a uh, lightning it's a there it has a radiation you know and in white color in a, in white color radiating white color like milk so nectar coming so it is like you know falling nectar bringing nectar from sankhapa and uh, and then purify yourself get into your crown and then washes away all the negativities and the bad actions that you have accumulated just uh, wipe uh, being wiped away for, right from your crown and slowly slowly goes down 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 there is all the negativities all bad karmas all anger hatred attachment ignorance everything is being wiped out from your body in the uh, so like in the, in in blackish color in the form of different uh, like a chakol in the form of chakol and in the form of um uh, in the form of a uh, scorpio and this uh, scary insects and animals went out from your body from all of your holes and then wiped out wiped out being wiped out and then it went down into the ground and deep down so there are there are two ways of to practice you know uh, two ways or three ways uh, so there are many ways you know so the uh, in the in the in the deep in the ground there are many creatures waiting open their mouth and they waiting to have some thing to eat and then you when you uh, when you um, push the all the negativities out of your body in the form of different animals and then they went into their mouth underneath the ground ground deep in in the ground and then all those uh, beings are satisfied their hungers are satisfied and then you pay all the debts that you owe but well, they owe to you right right you are them you are them okay 
Right. So that, that, that's a, that's are all paid. The debts are all paid. Okay. So something like if you, if it is not comfortable visualization, then you just wipe them out, ground, uh, went into the deep ground and disappeared. Whatever uh, way you like, and then again you can do it again and again, and you should feel that you you are now purified, and then. Nectar again comes and then your body is filled with that nectar. You're getting blessed. Your mind is getting blessed. Your speech is getting blessed. Even your body is getting blessed. That means all the sicknesses are gone. They will, you are, your immune system is boosted. So you, you know, become stronger. And you become like you are not never going to sick again like that. And whatever way you want. The most thing is that you get the wisdom, the blessing of wisdom. <clears throat> now you are being able to understand all profound teachings of Buddha Dharma because you got the blessings. You are blessed. You got the wisdom. So you, you visualize in that way. Understand? And then again, you wipe out your negativities and then take the um, take the nectar and they get blessed. And then at the end you make wishes, you know. So uh, uh, I always, uh, as as beginners, we uh, I always advise that you might make uh, the wishes that our mind is not going towards Buddha Dharma at all. Our mind is going to a different direction. So please bless me that my mind go towards Buddha Dhamma. That must be our, one of our wishes. Please bless me that my mind go towards Buddha Dhamma. When my mind goes towards Buddha Dhamma slightly, there shouldn't be any obstacles. Please bless me not to meet with obstacles when my mind goes towards Buddha Dhamma. Another wish, prayer. And <clears throat> all the negative thoughts should never come into my mind. Please bless me not to occur any negative thoughts within my mind. Another prayer. And please bless me to rise all the positive thoughts within myself. And then please bless me to uh, pacify all kinds of obstacles and that is uh, uh, external obstacles and the external, uh, internal obstacles. Please bless me and that kind of prayer. And then at the end, all the realizations. I please bless me to get all the realizations as soon as possible. So that kind of wishes you should make. Okay. So I think we have done the, with the Guru Yoga. In all our lives, through the victorious one, Lama Tsongkhapa by acting uh, as the actual Mahaya Guru, Mahayana Guru. May I never turn away from even an instant from uh, the excellent uh, path praised by the victorious ones. So this is not not really part of the Guru Yoga. So therefore, you can do it. You can leave it. Doesn't matter. But if you do it, it's good. Good prayer. Okay. Mm. And now I have asked by somebody from the audience to give. Uh, uh, the uh, oral transmission of Bajasato uh, Mantra, Bajasato Mantra, because um, so I thought uh, I will give the Bajasato Mantra in the uh, I'll get in the gathering so that everybody can get the oral transmission of Bajasato. So we could have done the initiation, but the now time is out, so we don't have time for that. Uh, anyway, uh, at least this time. 